What's going on, bros and girls? Today we're doing a full review of the BitPhoenix Prodigy Mini iTex case in white. And yes, I do know that there are a lot of reviews out there already for this case, but pretty much all of them have been done where the reviewer only had it for a few weeks, maybe about a month tops, before they reviewed it. So its longevity and reliability hasn't really been tested, and I've had this Prodigy for over a year now as a case for my own personal use. Actually more like around 16 months now, so this will probably be one of the only long-term reviews for this case. And speaking of long-term reviews, I'm thinking of revisiting some of my most popular reviewed products and kind of re-reviewing them in a way that lets you guys know how well they've held up over the years and if they've withstood the test of time. I'd start with things like my Sennheiser HD558, some of my audio and video equipment like my Rode video mic, and Snowball, and maybe even my HTC One or Herman Miller Aeron chair. If this does sound like something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and also if there's any products in particular from my past vids that you'd like me to revisit. But back to the Prodigy, in general I've been extremely happy with it, but as always with all my reviews, I'll start with any cons I've found and leave off on a good note with the pros. I've also done an in-depth unboxing and overview of this case, and it was the feature case in my Project Pure White build video series, and if you want to see those vids, just click the annotation or the links in the description. And for some of the best and most current pricing and availability, I've included some links for you down below. The first con is pretty much a con of all mini ITX cases, and it seems to be the sacrifice they all make that comes with their smaller size. It is a lack of cable management, and where more conventional standard size ATX cases have a motherboard tray slash backplate to hide the cables behind, the Prodigy, like most other MITX cases, does not have this benefit. Even using a modular power supply like the Corsair HX650 here, I've found the only real place to hide the cables was right beside the PSU and even that solution isn't exactly the neatest. I know this is more of an aesthetic thing and shoving the cables beside the PSU doesn't block airflow so performance doesn't suffer at all, so this isn't a deal breaker by any means, and like I said, pretty much all MITX cases suffer this problem because of their size. And to be honest, in the 16 or so months I've had it, after the initial build, I've only opened this right side panel only a few times when I've cleaned the case, so pretty much I never see those cables anyways. The next con relates to the cable management, and it's the limited space in the PSU bay that prevents you from using longer power supplies and also limits room for the cables coming out of the PSU, which results in a lot of tight bends on those cables. It has a limit of 17.5 centimeters available here, meaning your power supply should be 16 centimeters at the most to leave room for the cables. Even my relatively short Corsair HX650, which is only 15 centimeters long, is still a pretty tight fit. I see that the hard drive bays in the front limit space for the PSU bay, but I think a better design solution would have been to not have this last wall here, and instead had it open to give the builders the option to use more longer power supplies if they chose to remove the bottom hard drive cage. Even if the holes were bigger, or if there was a third available hole, that's what she didn't say, I think that would at least leave less restrictions, allowing more penetration of the thick and long PSU cables. However, I do want to let you guys know that even though you can see that my cables are very bent to get them to fit, I've never once had any problems with the case bending them to the point of breaking or disconnecting. The last con is the odd placement of the I.O. buttons. They're attached to the right side panel, meaning that when they're all connected to your motherboard, you do have to be careful when you remove the panel not to pull it out too far. It may make things a little awkward to move around if you do want to make any quick adjustments or changes to your rig. It will be especially noticeable if you've cable managed your side panel cords and tucked them away. You will have to redo that whenever you do open the right side panel. I would have liked to see the I.O. buttons placed on a stationary spot, like the top or bottom edges or maybe the front side edges of the case. But like I said though, after the initial build, if you're like me, the right side panel won't be open very often, and even then it's still a minor inconvenience. Now onto the pros, and there are quite a lot of them. The first is what a lot of people notice when they first see this case, and it is the exterior appearance. You've probably already noticed that it does look very old school Apple Mac Pro like, which isn't a bad thing as the old Mac Pro case was very well designed aesthetically. The Prodigy is just as visually appealing with its unique look that is both stylish and minimalist at the same time. The only breaks in the white design are where the vents are, and if you choose to not have an optical drive installed, it looks even more clean. Also, if you've owned white cases before, you'll notice that a lot of the time, if you've had them for a while, they start to fade into a not-so-attractive creamish or off-white color, or maybe some of the panels would stay white and some wouldn't. With the Prodigy though, I'm proud to say that after almost a year and a half of mostly sitting under my window under direct sunlight, none of the panels have had any discoloration. The next pro relating to its design is the Prodigy's functionality. The top and bottom corner pieces function as both feet on the bottom as well as handles on the top, and they are also really flexible to help dampen a bit of vibration and decrease shock on the components when carrying the case around. 
Some people have found the bottom pieces make the prodigy a bit wobbly, but I really found it only wobbles when you're intentionally trying to make it wobble. Under normal use, sitting on a table and fully loaded down with a system, it's perfectly fine on my desk. Also, on the inside, other than cable management, I found it extremely well designed. Natively, you can fit up to 5 hard disk drives, 6 if you use an adapter in the optical drive bay, and up to 8 SSDs, 5 in the cages, 1 at the bottom, and 2 on the side panel. So despite its small size, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure the Prodigy has the highest hard drive slash SSD capacity of any mini ITX case. Relating to functionality, this brings me to my next pro, which is airflow. Obviously, the main two components that need the most ventilation is the CPU and video card. The Prodigy has one of the best solutions for GPU ventilation, and that is a direct vent on the side panel, exactly where the video card's fans are. This is fresh, non-recirculated air that will go directly to the video card. For CPU ventilations, depending on if you are air or water cooled, it will either come from the front or top, respectively. For air cooling, like what I'm doing, the front fan will provide the bulk of this cooling and some have said the non-mesh front panel on the white case does restrict air, and I'm sure it does, but I don't think enough to make a huge difference as the openings on the borders still give ventilation. In my case, I've never had a problem with high CPU temps, and that's only using the stock 120mm front fan. I know my system isn't high performance or anything and requires very minimal CPU cooling, but even if you did need more cooling, you can add an additional 120mm fan up front or even go for a 200mm fan. The other option for CPU as well as GPU cooling if you include it in the loop is water and it is definitely where the Prodigy shines. You can have dual 240mm radiators mounted in here, one at the front and one at the top, which is extremely impressive for a Mini ITX. And again, I'm pretty sure the Prodigy has the highest radiator support of any Mini ITX case out there. And going back to GPUs, this is another pro, and it's the Prodigy's ability to handle large video cards. Though there are some downsized video cards out there that are optimized for MITX applications, you do not have to go that route in the Prodigy. This case has a modular design for the hard drive cages where you can remove either the top, bottom, or both cages, and removing the top cage allows you to still have hard drive and SSD space, but also have the case's full length available to fit a video card. This is about 12.5 inches of length, and as we all know, 12.5 inches is definitely long enough to satisfy any gr graphics card. <laughs> Last part I want to mention is value. You get all the above mentioned features in a very compact, portable design for around $80 at most retailers. This price made it a no-brainer for me when I was looking for a white case to house my Project Pure White build in. And if white isn't your thing, this case now has a huge choice of six different colors you can get it in. This is probably the most stock color choices of any case, and not just mini ITXs. So I hope you guys all enjoyed my full long-term review of the BitPhoenix Prodigy Mini ITX case in white. If you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, the links down below have some of the best prices you can find. Like I said, let me know if you guys want to see more of these long-term reviews. I think it would give more insight into a product's long-term reliability and durability. Also, drop me a comment down below and let me know what case you are using and what your thoughts are on these small form factor cases like the Prodigy. And if you did enjoy this video, please thumbs up, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And follow me on Twitter and or Instagram, it would be much appreciated. And until next time, YouTube. Peace.